Okay, hello. Um, there's been a new release of Overmine. It's a little bit overdue, um, so it contains quite a bit of uh, fixes and some changes. And it is a breaking release, but that does not mean you need to change a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, important changes and uh, yeah, show how it affects you and um, see where we are at. So. First of all, I want to talk about the Angular fix. So if you're using Overmind with Angular, there is a big breaking change. And that is basically because the initial implementation of connecting Overmind to Angular uh, wasn't based on a lot of experience with Angular because like most of us are React developers. But we got a lot of feedback and we did many iterations. And what we ended up with is uh, this concept. So now what you do is that you inject, uh, or sorry, you uh, import an Overmind service. And then you create an injectable service of your own where you type out the Overmind service so that you get your state and actions and everything. And then when you create the main app module, you include the Overmind module, which uh, contains a directive, which we'll look at shortly. And then you provide an instance of Overmind. And this is important for testing and later server-side rendering as well, because you want different types of instances of Overmind related to those things. And then uh, what you can do is uh, provide your specific store uh, by pointing to the Overmind service, so that when you inject your store, uh, Angular understands that it's actually this Overmind service that we are instantiating. Okay. So this is actually how it looks when you start working with it. So you uh, inject the store uh, you created, and then you have the possibility to select state. Note that uh, it doesn't return any observables or anything. Um, it's just the state. And you can give this select a callback to choose specific state. And then you can attach the actions directly if you want to do that. And then inside your template, all you have to do is add this track directive. And then you can call the actions and you can point to the state as normal and only the state you actually access will be tracked. And then if you choose to pass, uh, sorry, one more thing, uh, what's really cool about this is that it just works with push strategy and you can even turn off ng zone if you want to do that and it still works, which is really nice. Uh, if you choose to pass some state as input to a child component, for example, here we are passing a to do to um, a child component, you only need to add the track directive. You don't even have to add it. Um, if you don't add it, the parent component will take care of the tracking. But if you add the, this track directive, you move the tracking to this specific component, meaning that if you would, for example, change the to do title, only this to do instance component, component instance would actually re render. Okay, uh, but I have a little demo here. <laughs> it doesn't look really great, uh, but um, we have some code. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, we should be on Angular. So uh, what we see here is that we have our uh, Overmind instance. We have exported our store uh, in our module. We have imported all the stuff you saw in the documentation and set it up. And then we have our component with the state and the push strategy and all that good stuff. And then we track and we <laughs> have this uh, title up here and we can change it. So what's really nice now is that this works really well with the dev tools. So if we take a look at the dev tools here, uh, release demo. We can see that the title is hello from Overmind. And when I click it, it changes. And we can see that it triggered an action, uh, it changed the title, and it affected the app component. And the app component can be seen here with one update looking at the title path. So it's a really nice integration now, I think. So I, I hope this will encourage other uh, Angular developers to take a look at uh, Overmind because I think we have something really special to, um, to show you. Okay, that was Angular. Let's move on to, uh, let's see, what's that behind there? React? Yes. So one, uh, the only like breaking 
change like for non angular uh, developers is if you use this explicit typing um, the only thing that's breaking is this one instead of the t state object it's now called i state and the reason is just to be consistent like everything we export from overmind is prefixed with i not because it's necessarily an interface but we just have to prefix it with something and it's been a little bit confusing on what are the best conventions and stuff, and there really aren't any conventions. So we just chose to to use I as as we uh, have been using that for now. Uh, we just wanted to be consistent. So that's basically the only thing you have to uh, like worry about is if you do explicit typing, you have to and you use a derived you have to change the t-state object to i-state. That's the only breaking change for, for most um, people. Um, well, people using uh, React, uh, sorry, people using explicit typing and people using Angular. Those people have breaking changes. Uh, okay, but we have also um, uh, made it possible to use the provider pattern uh, with React. We already had this for the hook, but now it's consistent with also the connect. So what I've done here is that I'm I'm creating a connect and a hook uh, without passing in the overmind instance. So these uh, this connect and this hook, uh, and typically you would only use one of them, but this is just a demo. Uh, they don't really know anything about the instance because when we create um, when we render out the application that is when we actually create the instance. So we import the configuration, we create the instance here, and we provide it on the Overmind React provider. And that means that the connect and the hook can pick up that instance and use it as normal. Um, yes. So uh, if we take a look at the app here, we can take a look at how you, uh, like the different ways you can connect uh, to Overmind. So currently here I'm using the hook and this is like the most straightforward, elegant way to do it. Because um, you don't have to wrap the component in anything. You just use Overmind and you grab the state and the actions. But you could also use, um, for example, connect here. So you could say connect. And now you don't even have to type the app because the connect returns the correct type. So you could do that, but then you would receive overmind as a property instead, and you would have to point to overmind.actions, overmind.state. Uh, we can insert that, let's see. Uh, overmind.state. So that's also a way to do it, but now they are kind of like the component is inside the connect. You can test it separately. So what is a more typical pattern is to, let's move back to this one and rather tell it about the overmind instance passed in. And then we just connect down here instead. So that means that you could both export the app uh, separately and you export a connected version by default. Um, what you choose to do is probably related to where your project is in its life cycle. Is it a new project? You probably want to use hooks. Uh, if it's an existing project, you might want to go with a connect. Um, okay, great. That was connecting. And then we have tests because we have um, done uh, a few fixes on the tests. So they work a lot better. Um, so what we can see here is just an example. Uh, so one of the things that has come up now is this pattern of, uh, as we can see here, we're not instantiating Overmind inside the main Overmind file. You can still do that and pass Overmind into your create connect or your create hook. That's perfectly okay. But if you want to do testing or later do server side rendering, uh, you should rather just export a config and then, as I showed you, instantiate it where you render. Because that allows you, when you create your tests, to also just import the config. There's no instantiation here, just the config. And then you create your overmind mock. You can mount up 
uh, a component using uh, the uh, wrapping it with the provider, passing in the mocked version of Overmine, and then you can run some action which returns the mutations done throughout that action. And then you can check the mutations and you can also check to see if your component has updated the way you want it to. Um, so this is a really smooth testing API and it works uh, really well. And of course, if you haven't seen this before, you can also uh, mock out your effects. The over my mock will throw an error if it's running an effect you haven't mocked. And then you can just mock it here if you want to, uh, if you need to do that. Okay, uh, that was testing. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is in the API here, we have this add mutation listener, which allows you to listen to every specific mutation, but uh, it's not like Overmind renders every time there's a mutation. Uh, it does a flush. So you can also now add a flush listener. And the flush listener uh, happens whenever Overmind tells the components to update. And that will, of course, um, have like an array of mutations and some other information. So like in the example here, you might want to add a flush listener when you initialize Overmind so that you can store the, uh, the mutations in history, for example, to do some time travel or whatever you, you want to do. Um, yes. And generally there's been a lot of um, documentation changes, uh, just small details like we just keep iterating and iterating. Um, I especially encourage you to, to look at the running side effects guide, which is updated with uh, tips on how to initialize effects. Um, uh, lazily load effects so that you actually fire them up when Overmind instantiates, which is also really nice for uh, server-side rendering. Uh, we have fixed quite a few bugs, some related to async, uh, testing, and just small stuff all over the board, really. And yes, of course, we have changed the name from Webpack <laughs> project to Overmind DevTools in the DevTools. So that's a big, big thing. And um, yeah, so that's basically what I want to show you. Um, what we're doing for the next version now is um, tell the story of server-side rendering. So we are going to implement a similar API like uh, create Overmind mock which will be like create Overmind SSR or something, where you again pass in just the configuration of your app. And that will be tailored to running on the server side. And then we're also going to look into uh, the operators, because the operators now uh, works uh, quite well, but we can do so much more with them. Uh, like the basic uh, concept there is called the op, -op spec, uh, which allows us to do <laughs> basically whatever we want. and it uh, but it does support error handling and we don't have and we haven't implemented any error handling so here are like a couple a couple of examples of what might come like we can implement an operator called catch error which only runs if any of the previous operators throws an error and then it will continue to execute after that error is handled but you might want to for example have a fork error so that you can, if an error is thrown by any of the previous operators, you will receive the error. You can, based on the type of error, in this case, we're looking at the status code of some HTTP response. And then you can fork into different um, ways of handling it. Uh, but we might want to do other types of error uh, handlers as well. So we'll see what we end up with. Mm. Yes, great. Uh, I hope the release uh, works well for you. Uh, if you're using TypeScript, I recommend restarting the restart TS server. Sometimes you need to do that in VS Code. Um, other than that, I hope you're happy with the, with the release and I'm really looking forward to, to giving you server-side rendering. Okay, bye-bye.